Starlink Report. The Starlink Report. And this is the Starlink Report for October 26th, 2020. I'm Huey Poplock. SpaceX has launched another batch of 60 Starlink satellites on Saturday, October 24th at 11.31 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time with a liftoff from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. This is the 15th Starlink launch so far, and SpaceX has now launched over 800 of the small, low-Earth orbit satellites to date. This launch used a Falcon 9 first-stage booster that twice previously, both times earlier this year, including just in September for the delivery of a prior batch of Starlink satellites. The booster was also recovered successfully with a landing at sea aboard SpaceX's Just Read the Instructions floating autonomous landing ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Earlier this week, Ector County Independent School District in Texas announced itself as a new pilot partner for the SpaceX's Starlink network. Next year, that district will gain connectivity to low latency broadband via Starlink's network, connecting up to 45 households at first, with plans to expand it to 90 total household customers as more of the Constellation is launched and brought online. The launch was the third Starlink mission in less than two weeks after Falcon 9 launches October 6th and October 18th that each carried 60 Starlink satellites into orbit. SpaceX has boasted in filings with the FCC of the high reliability of the Starlink satellites. That included an October 15th filing where the company noted the successful launch and operation of nearly 300 additional satellites without a failure since an earlier report filed with the FCC. That streak, though, may have been broken on the October 18th launch. One, of the, one satellite was not raising its orbit like the other 59. Tracking data showed that the satellite's orbit was instead decaying, suggesting it had malfunctioned. The Federal Communications Commission, for its part, took notice of the new Starlink beta data. The regulatory agency initially doubted satellites could compete with the fiber optic and other ground-based broadband internet services in the agency's Rural Digital Opportunity Fund, a $20.4 billion subsidy program to shore up internet service in underconnected U.S. areas. But on October 13th, commissioners named SpaceX a qualified bidder, which permits the company to compete in a reverse auction process that starts on October 29th. Wireless signals are tightly controlled by government agencies to avoid interference problems, though, so Starlink can only be used in countries that explicitly authorize it. Gaining that permission has seemed sluggish but SpaceX made significant progress in both Australia and Canada over the past few weeks. Although more steps remain before users can connect to Starlink in either country, both countries have awarded SpaceX basic operation licenses. Sleuths have also discovered Starlink licensing efforts in other countries, according to an unofficial roundup on Reddit and various news reports. Here are the countries that the Starlink licensing efforts are going on. And finally, last Tuesday, Microsoft said SpaceX's Starlink will connect to its new modular data center business and help expand the company's Azure cloud computing business to remote areas, such as military bases and disaster areas. Here's what one of the Microsoft modular data centers looks like. 
The modular data centers are targeting both the public and private sector. For example, the units can be deployed as mobile command centers for missions involving defense, humanitarian efforts, and mineral exploration, Microsoft said. And that is... The Starlink Report.